Good evening, sec -tools. This is Mr. Xiao, and today I want to teach the lesson on reliability. Before I proceed, please make sure to have this worksheet on reliability with you. And at any point, you may speed up, slow down, or pause the video in order to suit your learning pace. So let me start by asking you or inviting you to get a post-it. Uh, and I want you to write down the message of the following source. Let's say this is source A. Source A is um, from a lesson by Mr. Xiao, myself. And let's say in lesson, uh, I made the following remark. I said, for history and of your exam, we will test you up to chapter 5, the defeat of Nazi Germany in World War II. Make sure to revise everything from World War I, Stalin, Hitler, and World War II. The source-based questions will be purpose, surprise, reliability, and evaluation. So take a couple minutes and write the message of this source. What is the main idea? What is the main argument? What is the source saying? Suppose we, you have done this, you have written it on post-it, and you, are, you have found the message of the source. And you have crafted a message that says, well, source A's message is that the end of year exam will assess many topics on world history and students are to be prepared. Suppose the evidence you have quoted is, we will test you up to chapter 5, defeat of Nazi Germany in World War II. Okay. That would be a message of the source. Uh, and... As you were crafting this message, you should have felt a bit jarred, a bit um, surprised, a bit taken aback. You should be in consternation because, because if your SEC 2 end of year exam were really on world history and were really on the defeat of Nazi Germany in World War II, you, you might feel troubled. You have no idea where to start because we haven't really been talking about Nazi Germany at all. In other words, source A is um, quite suspicious. How do you double check? How do you know that what source A has said about uh, the end of year exams requirements that you will be tested on world history? How do you know that what source A has said is reliable? Now, there are two methods I will teach you this year to test reliability to test the reliability of a source. So let's take the intuitive approach. Given that source A's message that end of year will assess many topics in world history, let's take an intuitive approach to check whether this message is true. The first thing you might think is, well, you know that lower sec history has been about Singapore all along. In sec 1, you learn about colonial period Singapore. In SEC 2, we went into the Japanese occupation. We learned about the road to self-government. And now we are in term 3. Now we are in merger and separation. There has been very little mention of world history and especially not the defeat of Germany. Furthermore, furthermore, you might have panicked and run over to the staff room in the great frenzy and looked for Mr. Riki and say, Mr. Riki, Mr. Riki, Mr. Xiao said we are going to... Um, be tested on defeat of Nazi Germany. Is that true? So you could have done either or both of these things and you would have concluded that source A is not reliable. Source A is not reliable because what you know about lower secondary history is different, is contradictory to what source A has said. Source A is not reliable because what you find out from Mr. Ricky, who would have told you, well, yes, lower sec history is only going to be testing Singapore history, would contradict what Source A says. In other words, there are two methods here for testing the reliability of a source. You can either check what the source says against your own knowledge that's method one, 
or you could check what source A says against another source that is reliable, and that's method two. So when we come to the reliability question, or it could be asked in a number of ways. Is source A reliable? Can you trust source B about something? Do you believe what source C says? Is source D credible as evidence about something? When questions are asked with just, is source A reliable? Or do you believe what source C says? Without a focus, you need to craft the message of the source. And if a focus is given, can you trust source B? Is source D credible about the focus? Can you trust source B about the focus? Then you make an inference and explain the inference based on the question focus. In other words, the first step to answering a reliability question, you must figure out what the source is saying. Once you have stated what the source is saying, then you test what the source is saying by doing a cross-reference. You check what it has said against your own knowledge or against another source. If your knowledge, if another source supports and agrees with what the source says, then you conclude the source is reliable. If your knowledge, if the other source contradicts, challenges, or disagrees with what the original source says, you can conclude that the, the original source is unreliable. That's the introduction. Uh, that's the theoretical basis of reliability. And we'll, we're going to apply this skill on a worksheet examining the responsibility for the 1964 racial riots. So now let me invite you back to, to the worksheet. I'm going to speed up. Reliability is about checking whether a source is reliable or trustworthy or believable or credible. Highlight this. And we know that by establishing a cross-reference, a valid cross-reference to either your own knowledge or another source. So at its core, it's about whether you believe and trust the source. If what the source says is believable and trustworthy, it's reliable. If what the source says is unbelievable and untrustworthy, it's unreliable. To establish if you believe or trust the source, you first need to know what does the source say? What does the source say? That's the first thing. And then you check what the source says against your own knowledge or another source. If it is supported, it's reliable. If it's contradicted, it's unreliable. Please highlight as we go along. And so you can fill in the blank. If you think a source is reliable, the source can be trusted. You can establish this by showing that it's supported by your contextual knowledge or by another reliable source. If you think that the source is unreliable, you should demonstrate this by saying that the source's message or inference is contradicted. contextual knowledge or it is contradicted by another reliable source. Can I leave you to, to fill in this worksheet on your own? And to recap, the three steps of answering a reliability question, ATQ, establish the inference or message, and do the cross-reference. So the three steps, highlight, ATQ, establish the inference or message, and do a cross-reference. Okay, uh, pause if you need to, to fill in the blank, to absorb this set of series of sequence or steps. And, and when you're ready, let's move forward to the actual example. Let's say we have a source-based case study on who was responsible for the 1964 race riots in Singapore. I would like you to pause and read this source, source A, a statement by the PAP on the Straits Times after the racial riots. Oh, and the PAP is saying, 
political leaders and newspapers have carried out an open and sustained propaganda against the PAP for many months, accusing the PAP of being unfair in, in, to the Malays. These anti-PAP rumours were spread by people and newspapers associated with AMNO. Um, so, the PAP on the surface is blaming political leaders and newspapers, right? But in fact, they are, they are blaming newspapers and political leaders who are being influenced by AMNO. As we know, AMNO is the United Malays National Organization. It's the Malay, Malayan political party that fights for Malay rights, special Malay privileges in Malaya. And they are wary and suspicious of the PAP's intentions. And this is the year 1964. Singapore has merged into Malaysia. The PAP has um, a rivalrous relationship with the, the UMNO leaders in Malaya. And their beliefs about racial politics has uh, caused much disagreement and tension between the two areas. So the first method we said was cross-reference to contextual knowledge, otherwise known as CK. We always answer a question, do you trust, by saying I trust or do not trust. If the question were, is source A reliable, we answer by saying source A is reliable, source A is unreliable. We use the command word to answer the question. Uh, so that's first thing, use the command word. Uh, the second thing is, uh, you will have realized that coming to this question, how do you even know if you trust it, right? Because um, we haven't even established the inference or the cross-reference. So actually, actually, when you do a reliability question, ironically, the ATQ comes last. You decide whether you trust or don't trust after you do every other step. And I will demonstrate a model for you how this is done. Okay, so I'm going to talk to myself and I'm going to answer this question in my head and I'm going to do it really fast. Study source A. Do you trust what the PAP says about who was responsible for the racial rights in Singapore? This is the question focus. It has to come up. So, who was responsible? Well, the PAP says AMNO was responsible. Right? AMNO was responsible because of their allegations that Singapore's government uh, Singapore's government, PAP government treated the Malay people badly. Okay. So, this would be an evidence. People accusing the PAP of being unfair to the Malays uh, people and newspapers closely associated with AMNO, right? So, because AMNO's people and newspapers have accused the PAP of being unfair, because AMNO alleged that Singapore's government is treating the Malay people badly, uh, the Malay people would be frustrated and upset and therefore uh, be incentivized to start the, riot in, the racial riots in Singapore. This is the message of Source A, right? And not if it's as, sorry, this is the inference you have generated from source A. And now that we've established this inference, uh, we need to check it. We need to check it. Is this true? Is this true? I be you could argue it multiple ways. Uh, I think the easiest way is to prove the truth of these, these claims. So I would think, so you would start with your contextual knowledge. Based on your contextual knowledge, I'm no leaders did come down to, Sing to Singapore to, um, to make fiery speeches against the PAP and encourage Malays to fight for their rights. This did happen. We know this from our lessons from the textbook that I'm no leaders like, like Syed Jaffa, right? I'm no leaders like Syed Jaffa, the Secretary General at the time. He did come down to make all these speeches in Singapore, saying that the PAP was uh, uh, trampling on the Malay rights and the Malay should ha have to fight for themselves. We, we do know that uh, newspapers like... Um, newspapers, Malay, news, Malay language newspapers and publications were carrying these speeches and were writing editorials that lambasted and, and, and attacked the PAP government. And so, in other words, our contextual knowledge agrees with the source inference. In other words, our contextual knowledge supports 
the source inference. And because the context your contextual knowledge supports the source inference, you now conclude that we trust this source and we can complete the ATQ. We trust the source. If you trust the source, you must trust the source because it is reasonable. Uh, similarly, if you were to write that you don't trust this source, you would say that it's one-sided. So you trust it. So how this answer would read uh, in the paragraph format is I trust what the PAP says because the PAP is reasonable in telling me that I established the message, the inference. So this should be inference. Okay. I'm not responsible for the racial riots because of the allegations that the Singapore government was treating the Malay people badly. You trust it because what PAP says about I'm not being responsible is supported by our contextual knowledge. Okay. The second method, let's look at it, uh, cross-reference to another source. To use this method, you would need to read the other two sources. Let me summarize the other two sources. Source B is an uh, interview with the Malaysia Prime Minister, Tanko Abdul Rahman, and he says that it's Indonesia that, that is to blame for the riots. Okay, so Source B would disagree with Source A. Source B would say it's not AMNO, it's Indonesia. If we were to cross-reference to source B, we would say that uh, source A, source, you do not trust source A. You do not trust what the PAP is saying. Because it's not AMNO, it's the, it's the Indonesian government. Right? So source B disagrees with source A. Source B would demonstrate that source A is untrustworthy. If we were to use source C, source C is a letter by a Singaporean which says that the Syed Jaffa, the Secretary General of AMNO, made a speech that whipped up the feelings against the Chinese uh, and therefore stirred up trouble. Um, again, Source C now blames AMNO. So if you were to pick Source C, you would say that uh, because Source C agrees and supports what Source A has said, Source A is trustworthy. So now it's quite clear what would the conclusions you would draw if you pick either source B or source C. The next question is, um, which source should you, should you pick? Which source should you pick? If you were to look at it very briefly, source B is an interview by the leader of AMNO, Tengku Abdul Rahman, the very same AMNO that's being accused of starting the riots. And source C is a letter by a Singaporean. I would pick, which source would you pick? Think about it. Uh, I, I would pick source C. I would pick source C. Because remember that a requirement when we do the cross reference is that it has to be a, another reliable source. And if you were to look at your worksheet, we want to choose another reliable source to do the cross reference because we, there's no point checking whether or not source A is to be believed, is trustworthy. If we were to pick a second source that is not itself trustworthy. We need a reliable source to do the cross-reference. And source A is accusing AMNO of being the, the one that's responsible for the riot. So source B, being from the leader of AMNO, is not an appropriate source to consult on whether or not AMNO is to blame. Source C, a letter by a Singaporean, seems to be a more neutral and unbiased source that we can approach in order to establish the credibility and truth of, of the matter. And therefore, our big source C, I'll look at source C. The Secretary General of AMNO made an inflammatory speech. This seems to be the, the key evidence. His speech was bound to stir up trouble. So these seem to be key evidences. Let's move them to our box here. Uh, source C. Uh, and so I've picked source C. I have the evidence from source C in hand, which is these yellow lines about Sad Jaffa making a disgraceful and in inflammatory speech. Uh, and Therefore, I need to generate the inference now. Let's look back at the question focus. Who was responsible? 
who was responsible. Who was responsible? It was uh, Amno. Amno. So the Amno was responsible for the racial riots. Leaders, leaders of Amno, political leaders of Amno, purposely uh, fan use public statements. To create anger between racial communities, which is namely the Malays and Chinese. Because source C says I'm not responsible, and source A PAP says I'm not responsible, this is a, a clear agreement, right? It's support. And because this is a support, or you trust. And again, because you trust what the PAP says, you would say that what it said was reasonable. So take some time, fill in these boxes, fill in these boxes, uh, pause where necessary. And I would like to therefore show you how the steps went, right? Answering steps. First, you generate the inference or the message from the source. Then you check your contextual knowledge or from or another reliable source. And then you decide or uh, figure out if your CK other source supports oh sorry there was a bit of a lag other source supports or contradicts um original source and finally support means you trust is reliable is to be believed belief is credible right or contradicts do not trust unreliable do not believe not credible does it make sense so this is your answering steps. But your writing steps is actually um it's actually not in the same order. Because whereas ATQ is step four when uh, in answering, when you're writing, ATQ is step one. When you're writing, you start with the ATQ, you then go to the message or inference, you then write support or contradict, and you give the cross reference. So the answering or the thing, the uh, the thinking steps. I should use the word answering. Sorry, the thinking steps is one two three four, but the writing steps is four one three two. Oh, let me show you. So if I were to copy out. answer from the from what you've done in this worksheet right you start with the ATQ and then you go to the inference
and then you go to the support or contradict and finally you provide the cross reference notice that the steps of writing the answer is uh, is very different from the way you think about it the way you think about the question is first you look at the source you generate inference you check your own contextual knowledge then you figure out if your contextual knowledge support or contradict and finally you atq but when we write the answer we start with the atq we go straight to the atq and then we go into the inference the evidence we do the cross reference uh support or contradict and we establish our contextual knowledge or the other source answer okay so i hope that's clear I would suggest that you copy this answer on full scat paper. Copy this answer on full scat paper and staple the full scat paper to the back of your worksheet because writing out the answer multiple times uh, for this new source-based question type reliability will help you remember how to do it. Um, same for this one. So... So I would suggest um I would suggest that you copy out these two paragraphs on full scat. Um I already put them here in one page for you, so you can pause the video here and then copy it on full scat so that you have a sense of how to answer this question from two different methods. First method, cross-reference to contextual knowledge. Second method, cross-reference to another source. In an exam, would you need to write both methods? No, one is fine. Just write one of the two methods, cross-reference to your own knowledge or cross-reference to another source, and that is the full six marks. In the exam, do you need to write both trust and do not trust? No, one side is fine. You just need one side to cross-reference. In the exam, um, if is there a correct side? Is there a is it is there a trust or do not trust only? Uh, it depends. It depends. Some sources have both sides. Some sources can be both supported and contradicted, but some sources are clearly, clearly one sided. And if they are clearly one sided, then your judgment of whether you trust or do not trust, whether it's reliable or not reliable, that judgment becomes important. How do you polish your judgment? Uh, can I re remind you, can I point you back to before the holiday, I, I gave you a source-based practice package. So you might remember seeing this huge package of, of, of questions. And on page four of this package, there are a whole set of 10 reliability questions. And I will encourage you to go to this package and, and test out test out and practice your reliability answering, uh, uh, hone and hone your judgment of how to evaluate, assess, and make a conclusion about the reliability of sources. Use this, this package. Okay. Um, it's already 29 minutes. I, I want to run through one last question um, to make sure that you have a few examples, exemplars to work with when you really start trying to understand this question. So let's go to, to source B. In source B, um, we looked at it briefly when we were trying to do the cross-reference for source A. In source B, study source B, is this source reliable? This question has no, no question focus, which means we have to generate a message from this source by ourselves. So let's look at the source because remember generating a message is about getting the ideas and arguments of a source and stringing them together. Let's look at the source. We all know that Indonesia under the direction of Sukarno was opposed to the formation of Malaysia as Indonesia wanted to control Sabah, Sarawak and Sabah and East Malaysia. The Indonesian government is therefore a very likely agent behind the riots. It's ridiculous for some people to suggest that UMNO members were responsible. 
In other words, the source is saying, the Tengku is saying that, that Indonesia was responsible for the racial riots in Singapore because Indonesia is greedy for Mal Malaysia's territory and wants to wants to divide and cause trouble for Malaysia. Indonesia, not Amno, was responsible for racial riots. The Tengku is blaming another country. Right? And this is the, the golden evidence, isn't it? Okay, so Indonesia, not Amno, because Indonesia wants the territory. Um, <laughs> notice that we are thinking in the in the, the order of, that I was talking about earlier. We are getting the inference, we are checking our knowledge, we are doing support contradict, then we ATQ. So our thinking steps are different from our writing steps. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so what, what do you want to use? Should we use another source? Should we use contextual knowledge? Your choice. Your choice. So the other two sources in this worksheet clearly blame Amno. So clearly this source is um, isolated. If you were to do a cross-reference, you would conclude that this source is not reliable. Um, we could do that. We could use another source. But in this case, um, uh, I would go for contextual knowledge because contextual knowledge is uh, very easy to access and you yourself know the history of the, the, the time. So based on my contextual knowledge, what do I know? There were, I can use the same knowledge from earlier, there were UMNO political leaders who did go down to Indo uh, Singapore to make fiery and fiesty speeches that, that accused the PAP of being, of treating Malays badly and thus creating anger and resentment between the races. I, I know this. I know this. And because I know that the UMNO leaders did go down to Malaysia to make these speeches, um, source B is clearly not saying, saying the whole truth. It's being contradicted by my contextual knowledge. about Indonesia and not AMNO being responsible for the riots. So since source B, sorry, source B is not saying the whole truth, it's being contradicted, based on the command word, reliable, I would have to conclude that uh, source, source Source B is unreliable. Because it is no longer, do we say reasonable? Because it's one-sided. It's only blaming Indonesia. So this is how we answer um, question two, source B. Okay. I leave you to go and do question three on your own. I would suggest that you copy both or uh, all of questions one, two, and three's answers onto full scap and staple at the, to the back of this worksheet. Finally, on the last page of this worksheet, there is a set of rubrics. You want to look at the, the column on excellent. Uh, these rubrics provide, provide a set of checkboxes, uh, a checklist for you to test whether your answer for reliability is, is strong. In SEC 2, you only need to do the content evidence, the, the sorry, the content inference, the evidence, and the cross-reference. You can ignore tone. You can ignore tone. You can ignore purpose. The purpose level will be taught in upper SEC. And some of you can already suspect it. Source B is a very classic example of a purpose level answer because the Tengku has a purpose in saying that Indonesia is to blame 
because the Tengku wants to protect Amno's reputation. Therefore, because of his agenda to protect Amno, he is being one-sided in his speech, in his interview. And therefore, what he's saying about the responsibility not being with Amno, that message is not reliable because it suits his political agenda. That level of purpose is going to be taught in upper sec. Don't worry about it. At this level, I teach you only two methods. It's all cross-reference, either cross-reference to contextual knowledge and all cross-reference to, um, to another source. Okay, uh, I've taken up quite a bit of time. I want to, I, I'm, I'm done with the lesson. I just want you to go back to this part and remember that even though your thinking steps are first, you find the inference of the source, you check your knowledge, you see if it support or contradict, and then you ATQ. Even though these are your thinking steps, when it comes to writing, make sure you write the ATQ first, then the content inference, then you figure out support or contradict, and finally, you do the cross-reference. Okay, that's the end. That's the lesson on reliability. And we will, we will be tested on reliability for end of year exam, six mark question. And I hope you will be well prepared. Okay, that's it. Have a have a good time. See you, Sectus.